Hello, everyone. This is Elijah Ignatiev of the School of Conscious Communication, and I'm interviewing master healers that I know, uh, that I've known for a long time. And I'm sitting here with Sada Kanakin, who is a registered therapeutic counselor whose company is called Kin to Kin. And she has been working in a body mind therapy uh, healing field for I'm not sure how long, but Tell me, how did you get into it, and why do you think it is distinctly different from, let's say, other modalities of healing? Hi, Elijah. I, first, I want to say thanks so much for having me, and it's so good to see you. It's been a long time, and I just, I admire the work that you do because I don't know what other people think of you, but I think you're a genius at the forefront of what you're doing, so that, to me, is, is amazing, and it's it's, it's an honor and a pleasure to speak with you. Um, how did I get into it? Uh, I Essentially, I started taking a therapy course because I was having a lot of challenges in my life and seeing repetitive patterns um, that I just couldn't break and change. Even though I had a lot of focus and a lot of drive, I wasn't able to change them. So I started taking um, self-therapy courses and those self-therapy courses led me to the place where I actually couldn't stop because after the first year, I was in sort of, if one could say, the pit of my hell. <laughs> and, um, and I couldn't see any way out unless I continued. And so I, yeah, I continued and, and did a um, three-year intensive program to become a therapist, a registered therapeutic counselor, and an additional year in hypnotherapy. And really, I, the difference, if I go to your question on what's the difference between body-mind therapy and regular therapy, body-mind therapy focuses on the body and the connection between the body and the mind, not in the sense the mind as a... Um, as a mechanism or a tool, but actually the body mind as the whole part of the organism, which con contains all of our organic aspects. So all of our neurochemistry and all of biochemistry and all of that, in addition to all of our emotional content and all of our energetic content. So it's the whole organism. And so that's the main difference. So the focus really is on using the body as the vehicle for transformation and, and knowing that the body is the one that has the solutions. So the body mind has the solutions. Okay. <laughs> could, could you maybe go into a bit more depth about what happened for you? Like, what was your own transformational journey a bit in terms of uh, it being a bit different from, let's say, again, other things that you've done? Yeah. Um, so what happened for me? I guess I can start off by saying, you know, I, I had a lot of um, issues around trust, if one could say that, right? So I had a hard time trusting people and a hard time opening my heart. And in the process for me is what I found is that I had fragments of myself and I would present to the world a fragment. So if I had a fragment over here, I would present this fragment to the world. And yet I didn't feel totally seen or understood because it actually wasn't all of me. It was just a fragment of me. And then for whatever reason, something would happen and another fragment would get triggered and then that would be the part that was visible. So the process for me was really about reclaiming pieces of myself and first of all, finding them. Sometimes that wasn't always easy and often that related to, you know, early experiences of trauma um, and, you know, separation from family. I mean, we can get into that side, but I don't think that's that important. What's important is that through the process, I was able to actually find a connection to my own body and my own internal wisdom that you could use the emotions of an experience, like let's say a trauma um, of, of fear, 
and you could follow the emotion of fear into your body to where it resides and go deeper into the fear until you have, you know, what would be called um, uh, an orgasm of fear, right? So you, where your body completely loses control and you are completely in that animal mind of yours in total terror. And when that happens, it, it allows the neural chemistry to transform in your body. And if you can follow that and stay with it, it allows your body to completely transform. And it, it, will, it will take you into movements, into uh, positions of things that you actually couldn't do during the trauma that you wanted to do unconsciously. And once that happens, then it actually transforms and it, it, and it heals. I think so many of us have that unhealed trauma within us and no matter where we go, it still seems to be there. Uh, I, I know that you've been very dedicated to this craft and, and to me, you also are very gifted in your own ability to read people outside of any courses. And I think sometimes isn't it difficult to sort of apply your own gifts to ourselves. You might see a lot in somebody else, but to sort of cure our own things can be very difficult. What would you say is your greatest passion in this side of the work? Like, um, I mean, my passion for sure is, is related to dreams and dreaming. Um, I find that um, in working with clients, sometimes it's a little delicate going, you know, going into places where people are really tender and soft and, and, and hurt quite a bit. Whereas if you can access, um, if people remember their dreams, and if not, you can learn how to remember your dreams. You can access parts of the unconscious uh, that will teach you how to connect to your body mind. And so dreams really are, I mean, they really are like when Jung says that dreams are the royal path, they, they really are because they tell us about ourselves when sometimes we don't understand ourselves. So the dreams illustrate parts of us that we've either rejected, forgotten, disassociated from, or repressed. I mean, they also tell us about the good parts of, of who we are, but often we, we are pretty good at knowing what we're good at. Um, we often don't want to look and see the parts of us where we're not, you know, so great or the shadow side of who we are so dreams actually illustrate all of that and so i do dream therapy and i also take people through a six-week workshop series it's an online series of one hour segments mm -hmm. over the course of six weeks where um, individuals learn how to start connecting to themselves and how to connect to their oniric mind which is the part of our body mind that has the symbolic language, which we interact with every day. What do you mean? Like, what's so, the relationship between the dream world and then the everyday? And the everyday world. So um, the symbolic world is actually a part of our oniric mind, which goes deeper in our unconscious. And we react to the world of symbology a lot more emotionally. Mm -hmm and we connect to it easier. And so when we're connecting to our dreams, it, it comes in the form of symbols. And so it's not a direct communication, but it's like any language, like learning French or German or you know, some other language. We have our own symbolic language, each individual, and that symbolic language is communicating to us all of the time, helping us, propelling us to heal and, and moving us into the direction of, of personal healing. You have also worked with other master healers before this, and you had someone on Hawaii that you were very close with, right? Yes. Can you say a bit about him and perhaps what you learned and perhaps how does that integrate in with this? Hmm. So um, I was very lucky to study um, with uh, Papa Makua. His full name is, how, well, I actually, I don't know his full name because... He's Hawaiian and they have really long full names, but we, we lovingly call him Papa Makua and his, his first name is Hale Makua. 
Um, he spent a lot of time supporting a number of us to learn through a, spiritual practices how to be sovereign. And um, how this relates to the therapy that I do now is that really it is our own personal journey. Almost everything, well, everything that we see in the world is connected to our own ability to process, process information and content. And um, our capacity to grow and transform is based in our, in our own learning. Um, Papa Makua, he used to say to me that one uh, of the only ways that people really grow is through pain and suffering. And that's just the way that it is on our planet. Um, he also, you know, in, in supporting individuals, he would always say everyone has their own sovereign right to choose for themselves. And if we don't know who we are, it's really hard to choose, right? If we're triggered by outside stimulus and outside environments um, and, and we get going on that, then it's hard to make a conscious choice that's, that's perfect for the moment. Perfect maybe is the wrong word, but that's in right relationship for the moment. I think every moment has, has, the most opportune thing to unfold in that moment. And if we're filled with all kinds of programs and, and stuff, then, then we can't be in right alignment. We can't make choices in right alignment. And being in that space within yourself doesn't mean that you make nice choices that, that suit everyone. It just means that you're in right relationship. You're in right relationship with yourself and you're in right relationship with source. And Papa Makua, that was his biggest teaching was to be in right relationship with yourself. I mean, he used to tell me it's, it's an inside job and he, and I, and he's like, you need to be able to control your emotions. I didn't know what that meant. And um, finally he just looked at me and he said, yeah, if they can yank your chain, you got work to do. I mean, he was a very, very famous healer, wasn't he? Like, uh, he, he was well known in the Polynesian islands. I, I don't think, I mean, for him, that part wasn't important. Um, he, he just, he was committed to supporting um, a number of us to, on our healing journey. And, you know, who he was wasn't what mattered. What mattered was that he was present. Well, I agree. But if you're learning hockey from Wayne Gretzky, it's very different from learning hockey from other people, you know? So I, I just want to bring attention to the quality of the yeah. people that you've been working with. Like you're to learn what you learned in the body mind therapy. Weren't you learning from another originator? Like, wasn't that somebody who'd come up with his own methodology? Yeah. Yeah. My, um, my instructor for body mind therapy is Carlos de Leon and he is the originator of ontogonic therapy. It's called ontogonic therapy, um, which in translation means journey to the self. And um, yeah, of course he, he has, um, he's very well known in um, Mexico for his psychotherapy and for his psychology. Um, he's also well known for, you know, way back when being involved in um, a lot of uh, studies and research around different, um, I don't know, uh, religious beliefs is maybe the wrong word, but different um, spiritual traditions uh, and how they saw psychology and and the health of the individual in order to, to grow and and to um, yeah, to just be able to be connected to yourself and to be, you know, I'm going to use the word again, in right relationship with, with the divine. Mm. Um, because there is, I mean, there is nothing else. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how else, to, how else to say it. So yeah, he still teaches um, in Vancouver. A lot of his uh, teachings are now online. Um, so he uses a lot of the introductory things that he teaches online and, um, any of the more advanced courses, I highly recommend him to mm. anybody that's interested in going deep. It's for sure. It's not for the faint of heart. 
<laughs> you have to be willing willing to look at your own stuff and 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 be really honest about your own your own thing what do you think is one of the biggest blocks for people in really um, coming to terms with their own trauma or their own healing uh, what do you find with people I think the hardest thing is acceptance. Mm. If, if I go with, you know, the people that I work with and even, you know, in myself, there are things that sometimes you just don't want to accept. And we are really great at creating a whole bunch of illusion uh, around and, and story. And we have a lot of tricks that we've learned over the years. Um, but yeah, radical acceptance, I think, is, is, is probably the key. If, if, if there was only one thing to practice, mm. radical acceptance would be the one thing that, that I would say. Because if you can accept where you are and what's going on, then you're actually standing in a position of power that allows you to, to take a step. Well, didn't the Buddha say that it wasn't actually what was occurring to you? It was just not being able to accept what was occurring to you that created the suffering? Yeah. Yeah. He seemed to kind of know what was going on. So yeah. what about in terms of the dream side of things? Did you get, uh, is there a lineage you're working through? Or is this specifically more from your own um, connection um, to it? Yeah, so there's a little bit of it's it's a mix for sure. Um, I'm I'm I've always been an avid dreamer. I've, I've used dreams for my own personal healing, and during my therapy program, I ended up studying. Um, Carlos taught very specific um, dream therapy that was in support of of um, the ontogonic perspective, which basically is so that people can evolve. So you can use your dream practice to actually liberate if, if you want to do that. Um, it, does, it does take you the whole way. And it, it includes um, a lot of uh, psychotherapy based in uh, union practices. So if you really want to go deep, you can use um, the union archetypes for, for the dream work. Um, you can also there's some gestalt involved in, in the dream work and a lot of, um, I would say, drama and, well, drama play, role playing, that kind of thing. So it would be more like dream theater. Mm. Mm -hmm. So your workshop has six different classes? Uh, yeah, my workshop has six one hour classes that I do once a week so that you have a week to practice what you're learning in order to be able to access your dreams. Mm. And how much does that cost? $149. Wow. Uh, and when's your next one coming up? So my next one is starting in November. Okay. And how many, how many seats do you have there? I have, as it's online, so unlimited. Okay. I mean, yes, it's unlimited, but really uh, it's good to work with, you know, around 30, 40 people because then everybody gets enough time to ask questions. So I have the one hour Zoom and then an online Facebook, private Facebook page where people can ask questions throughout the week if they're having challenges. And if I see a theme, then I'll include that in the next um, next you know lecture that I do. Okay, and what about if they're getting personal counseling from you? Like how many sessions do you usually uh, take to see progress or what would you suggest? So if people are looking to do some, some personal therapy, then it really depends on where, they, where they're at, if they've ever had any body psychotherapy before, and how connected they are to their body mind. So some people come in and they're quite connected to their body mind, and it's quite easy to just go, you know, for the gusto right away. And so we, you know, I, it's hard to say, I mean, you can't say how many sessions, mm. um, but for people who are not connected to their body mind, then what I recommend is uh, a series of 10 sessions, which are, is called, it's TEP, um, and it's a myofascial release that's a specific process to connect you to your body mind. And then after that, we can do some therapeutic sessions that will, not that the 10 sessions won't address issues 
because um, for sure it's going to address quite a bit and you'll you'll have a lot more connection to your body and understand what your body's already been trying to tell you that you haven't been hearing. Um, and then if we do any therapy sessions after that, it will just be a lot easier because sometimes I find people not connected and they don't want to do the tap which is fine if they want to go that way. But then when we go into the therapy sessions, it's a bit of a struggle because there's always this resistance to try to connect to the person to the body when they don't really want to connect. Now, is this, is this first 10 sessions, is this body work or is this specifically still um, non-touch therapy? No, it's, it's body work and um, it's like a myofascial release. So it's, it's, it's a massage a type of massage in the body is um, we address it in seven sections. Mm. Um, and actually all of the body mind therapy that we that I, I do, um, at some point it might include the component of touch. Um, because sometimes um, a person might be, I don't know, flailing <laughs> on the floor, like really upset crying or, you know, pounding something because they're super angry and I can see that the energy or the motion is wanting to move into a specific motion and you know whether it's a muscle in their hips or in their buttocks in their glutes or somewhere in the shoulder area um, then I might put a little bit of pressure there or just put my hand there in order to bring awareness um, that that's the place that needs to open up and then and then the person can can flow into it uh, And how much does the 10 sessions cost for that? So if people book 10 sessions, it's a it's a thousand dollars and if they want to book just a single session, it's a hundred and twenty five Okay, mm -hmm. and is that for an hour? Is that? Uh, I no, it's per session. So generally a session could be anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour and 15. Okay. So it just depends on, on, you know, there's, there's a rhythm to it. Once you get into it, there's a rhythm and a flow and it's like, you don't want to stop just because the time is over. Mm -hmm. You'd want it to complete. Cause that also isn't nice when, you know, somebody's left in the middle of something. For sure. And which area of town do you work out of? So I, I have a studio space that I work out of. It's on 7th and 1st, um, just near Granville Street Bridge. And for people that are in Nelson, I do sometimes do house calls in that area. Ah, and so, and the dream is online? The dream and the dream, online? yeah, the dream um, workshop series is online. What would you say to people right now in this COVID kind of environment uh, in terms of uh, dealing with what is happening in the world right now, just in a general sense? Um, yeah, what I would say is know thyself. I mean, you know, it's, it's like there's a lot of there's a lot of fear and a lot of unconscious programming happening when you go outside and you see the masks and you see some security guard standing at the entrance to a store or any kind of location that you're going in and please, you know, hand sanitize. So there's lots of unconscious programming happening with that. Um, and my recommendation is go inside and see what happens to you when that happens. And if it's fear, if it's anger, you know, if it's whatever it might be, that's the thing to work with because COVID is just a trigger. It's not actually what's happening to you, right? Mm -hmm. It's the trigger to illustrate to you where you have a block. And the more you can be in harmony with yourself, the easier it is to know whether some place is safe for you to go or not, or someplace rather than second guessing or, um, yeah, or I mean, just then you have an, your internal guidance system. Mm. Well, I think we've, we've got a, a, a little tidbit. I, I think I might end things with saying that Sarah is very humble and she's probably one of the most gifted people I've ever met in the arena of, of healing, especially in regards to feedback and especially in regards to seeing into things in a, in a way that is, is it's hard to describe. 
And so I, I want to thank you for sharing your insights and your work today. And if there's anyone out there who sees this, I would uh, strongly suggest to participate in the Dream Workshop or to get some individual uh, counseling because uh, Sarah is a hidden gem of Western Canada and uh, uh, you, will, you will have a very transformative experience, I assure you. <laughs> well, thanks so much for that. I don't know about hidden gem, but um, thanks. It's, and it's, it's really a delight to see you.